Last Thursday, a number of you may have noticed some changes when opening Google Assistant. The app icon probably started looking like this, and you may have seen this prompt asking if you want to switch from Assistant to Gemini. Well, if you want to know exactly what Gemini is and how it's like to use, you've come to the right place because that's what I'm going to be covering today. So starting with the basics, what is it? It is a currently experimental replacement for Google Assistant based on Google's Gemini AI, which until last week Thursday was called BARD. While Gemini is accessible through the website gemini.google.com and has been for the last year or so at bard.google.com, this is built into the Google app allowing you to access it through the app, not on the website, just by invoking it as you would have with Google Assistant. It is currently officially available in these countries, but many others, such as me, have been able to access it without living in those regions. So it seems like you'll just have to wait and see if you're allowed to use Gemini. And as I mentioned before, it's technically experimental, so the developers are taking in a lot of feedback and its features are changing quite often, as you can see in this thread. For example, I found out whilst writing the notes for this script that Google had fixed a problem where if you activated Gemini by touching the screen, so with this slide from the corners or touching the mic, what you said wouldn't send until you manually clicked the send button. It now does automatically send, so clearly they quickly received that feedback and made a fix. Additionally, today Google announced Gemini 1.5, an update to the large language model which allows it to remember context over a much larger period of time or number of messages. Therefore, whilst I do have complaints, I'm sure at least a couple of them will be fixed pretty quickly. Gemini is improving rapidly. What is the AI like, however? Well, to be completely honest, I don't know enough about other generative AI software to deliver a definitive verdict. However, I will talk about what I know from my limited use of ChatGPT and Copilot. Google offers the Gemini Advanced tier, which, just like pure ChatGPT4, you have to pay for. It's $20 or £19 a month, though that does include the 2 terabyte Google One tier, which means that Gemini Advanced actually only costs about half of that price. Gemini Advanced seems to be similar to ChatGPT4. I'll leave a few more in-depth comparisons in the description if you want to read them. But the fact that you can access ChatGPT4 for free using Microsoft Copilot does make that better for the average person. Just looking at normal Gemini, however, I found it to be pretty useful, although sometimes wrong, such as these two examples where it hallucinated the score of this Arsenal versus West Ham football game that was currently underway, and another where it thought that it was still called Bard. Therefore, I would say that you can use it for many different purposes and it will be decently accurate. However, as with any generative AI, you need to be wary of hallucinations. So, it's preferable that you have some kind of pre-existing knowledge or do a bit of your own research if it's important that you don't learn something incorrect. Looking at the app itself, I have much more to say. In terms of positives, it's much better than Google Assistant was for things which required Google Assistant to do a search. Although, beware of AI hallucinations, as I did mention you can ask it a wide variety of somewhat obscure things and it will usually respond with an answer rather than reading out the top Google result. Although to be fair, that usually worked out pretty well. It also does have a number of Google Assistant's functions, such as Google Home Control, Timers and Media Control. And last of all, it's nice that you can continue older conversations in the app, just in case you want to follow up on something from before. However, in my opinion, there are currently far more negatives. There is still a lack of support for many staple Google Assistant features. You can't set or manage reminders, can't use routines, 
can't play music, and more. Those are some rather basic features that I'm surprised were left out at launch. And on top of that, there is no continued conversation. You have to tap it or use the power button to get it to listen every time. It is somewhat confusing that both Gemini and Assistant exist simultaneously and that Google is pushing people to use this ostensibly experimental project. I think they should have made it a beta that people had to sign up for so it isn't as confusing and annoying to the general public. On top of that, it doesn't cite sources like Copilot does or offer you a quick and easy way to just Google search what you asked, which I think they should add. And last of all, the UI is just much worse than Google Assistant's. Whilst I don't think Gemini's UI is bad, I think it would have been much better for it to be integrated into Google Assistant's UI, building upon it. Which brings me to my next section. These are just my thoughts about Gemini, but I think Google is really messing up with the name slash branding of its phone assistant mode. To be clear, I think that Gemini is a better name than Bard and is fine for the web-based generative AI, although it is a little confusing that Gemini Advanced, the product, uses the Gemini Ultra Large Language Model. However, I think it is stupid for Google to try and replace Google Assistant with Gemini beyond just the lack of features, because I'm sure that will be solved eventually. They have spent eight years building up the Google Assistant brand, putting it in millions of devices like phones, speakers, watches, Chromecast TVs, and now they're simply going to throw that all away? While it's not clear right now if Google intends to completely replace Google Assistant with Gemini, I definitely think they should not, and instead should put those generative AI features powered by Gemini into Google Assistant itself for those things where Google Assistant would usually just do a Google search. I'm not sure what they would call it, but I think that building upon this widely known, already existing product would be a much better direction for Google to go on. To conclude then, I do think that Gemini, particularly on phones, has a lot of potential. Whilst it's not perfect now, with a lot of work, it can do what Google Assistant does best just as well, which will make it a better product overall. If they bring this functionality over to Nest devices, then I think it would significantly further the lead that Google already has over Alexa and Siri although we'll have to see about Siri once iOS 18 launches. I only hope that Google doesn't kill Google Assistant in phones and especially in other devices in favor of Gemini. I know it would be very Google of them to do so, but I think it would be much better to just integrate these features into what is an already great voice assistant. Make sure to subscribe and see you in the next video.